Hey YouTube, how you going? It's Rob Moore here from Learn to Paint on YouTube and the Moore Art School and the Learn to Paint Club. Yeah, I just thought I'd do a little quick demo. Um, I'm just playing around today really in the studio and uh, playing around with new ideas. Um, so I'm doing, just been actually doing a few little quick demos um, just to get a bit of a feel for some new ideas that I can do. So thought I might invite you in. Uh, I know my connection is not that great, so I do apologize. But in June, um, apparently we're getting an upgraded uh, internet connection. The NBN here in Australia is finally gonna roll out to where I am. Um, that's what they tell me anyway. They better, they because as soon as I get the uh, NBN connected, I'll be live streaming all the time for you guys. And um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. So I've just got a little cam piece of canvas, eight by four. I haven't even decided what we're going to paint yet, but I've been just experimenting with uh, ideas and I'm um, trying to get a bit more abstract and a bit loose uh, in my paint. Excuse me while I just put some tape up here. Yeah, I, I really, I've been so focused for all of my painting, I won't say life, but the time I've been painting, I've been so focused on um, trying to create, you know, impressionism is I guess the core of what I do, but you know, but more a realistic feel, and, I've, and I feel like it's time to loosen up a little bit, try new things, um, experiment more, and uh, have more fun. And at the same time, I'm also uh, starting to build up my sales on eBay, doing little quick paintings like this, and I'll talk to you more about eBay sales for those that are interested in future demos. Um, there we go. The eight by ten. Um, so yeah, I'll talk to you more about that. And somebody said hola to me, so hola back to you. <laughs> Must be Spanish, I guess. Um, I don't know that I can actually, because I'm doing this on my phone, so I don't even know if I can look at the comments. Um, super chat, all live chat messages. Well, let's see. Ho. I didn't say ho. Holly I said ho. So ho back to you. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your painting. What are we going to paint? Um, how about we do a field scene and we do a nice sunset in it. Um, I like dusk mm -hmm. paintings, especially in the sort of the feel of the tonalist. And one of my favorite artists who you'll find here on YouTube is uh, Dennis Sheehan, who's a tonalist artist. And um, I think just a brilliant, brilliant artist, right? So there's a horizon line. I think maybe we'll have a a bit of a tree, something like that. I don't know. Does that look like a tree? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But what I want to do is create a nice glowing sunlight through there. And um, put in some marshy water. Where I live in the hinterland here in, in uh, Queensland, near Noosa, um, we get a lot of... Uh, a lot of watery, swampy areas. So this sort of style really appeals to me. Um, you know, at dusk, so it's gonna be a lot of moody, atmospheric sort of scenes. So there's a tree. And yeah, what, I, what I'm really working towards at the moment, because I, I think I started out by saying that I've, I um, have really begun as an artist in my sort of early 40s. And I, I I initially was drawn to painting by Impressionism, like the Australian Impressionists, Arthur Streeton and all those sort of guys. And I love, I love their work, you know. It's what inspired me to paint originally. But the more I paint, the more I'm drawn towards trying to represent the landscape and so on. Not so much do represent, representational painting, but to um, do more capturing the emotion of the painting, if that makes sense. The emotion of the scene and how I feel about it. That's, that's become more important to me. So less detail, you know, like I'm uh, not trying to capture every leaf anymore. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's been people who've influenced me in recent times that, uh, that I see them painting in this way where they're just so much looser and um, freer than what I've been, you know? And I thought, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. What is the point in trying to re-represent the landscape? Um, when there is cameras and yeah, everyone's a photographer these days, you know what I mean? Um, that's pretty fiery, that red, isn't it? Whew. But I guess if we're going to do a sunset, um, 
And look, this is just a quick demo as well. Keep that in mind. But we want lots of nice marshy sort of reeds and things here. I love painting these dusk sort of scenes. So that might be the direction that I head in with my painting. I don't really know. I, I sort of feel like I'm in an experimental phase right now where I'm, I'm sort of learning new ideas, new techniques, and, uh, and who knows where my painting will end up as a result. But uh, I'm having fun trying to figure it out. But you know, like in, in terms of, because I, I do do a lot of teaching through my more art school and the Learn the Paint Club and so on. So nothing will change with that. I'll keep doing basic landscapes and seascapes. But for my own personal painting joy, you know, um, what I paint when I'm not teaching, I do little things like this, little sketches. And I'll show you some of the other works that I do. Um, and I sort of find, you know, just pull this painting off. Here's a little painting that I've done, sort of inspired by the uh, Dennis Sheehan. Um, so look him up on, on YouTube, I think he's a brilliant painter. But he, he's sort of painting in the style of the old master tonalists, George Innes and, and guys like that, who I'd never heard of until I, I sort of came across Dennis Sheehan. Um, I'll show you another one. This is a bigger one. I'm just going to pull it off the wall. This one here. So this sort of dusk scene with the moonlight and so on, that's what I, I'm really enjoying painting at the moment. So um, who knows, that's what this right here is going to become. Uh, but what, the other thing I'm teaching myself to do is to paint, paint quicker and be more productive because I'm, you know, I, I earn my income mostly from my art school, but I progressively want to earn more of my income from selling my work. I do sell my work, um, but I'd like to sell a lot more. And so I'm experimenting with eBay and the like. Um, my palette's getting extremely messy here. Let's just get on some grey for the sky. So keep in mind this is a dust scene, right? It's going to be um, the sun's heading down, and I want to do the sunset happening in the sky there, which we'll put on shortly. So I like doing these little little studies like this. Um, and, and if I get a good one, I'll turn it into a bigger painting. Um, and, you know, the ones that, well, all of them really, I'll pop them on eBay. And if they sell for $10, $20, $30, I don't mind, you know, because it's on roll, it's on a canvas I can roll up, pop it in a postal tube and um, send it out easily anywhere in the world. So have a look for me on eBay if you like this painting when it's finished. Um, never know, you might be able to grab it. Uh, what do we do? A bit of yellow. Oh, there's a bit of Brittian going in there too. So a bit of green in the sky. And you say, oh, Rob, what do you mean a bit of green in the sky? Well, you never know. Um, I want to keep this sky lighter, but greyer <coughs> than, um, <coughs> pardon me, uh, greyer than this dark, so the, the sky's going to be lighter than that, but it's still going to be a night time or a dusk setting, you know. And just blend it into the underpaint there, get a nice soft edge. <coughs> oh, my apologies. Mm -hmm. And uh, just keep working that in. So what I like about this style of tonalism that I've, you know, I've been following Dennis Sheen quite a bit, trying to learn what I can, what I like about it is it's non-descriptive really. It's more emotive and capturing the feel than what it is. Um, trying to describe too much of the landscape. Now, the way I approach it is, of course, nothing like Dennis. Um, he's a master artist of many years and I'm a beginner, a relative beginner. You know, I teach beginners how to learn to paint, but by comparison with a den of shame, you know, I'd have to say I'm a beginner. Um, not a total beginner, but when I'm looking at his approach and his work and so on, then yeah, I'm a beginner. <laughs> you know, how long does a beginner last? Maybe a beginner, you're a beginner for <laughs> most of your painting career, I don't know. Um, but by comparison, you know, and I think it is good to have mentors and, and people that you aspire to uh, move in their direction, not to copy them or not to be them. You always want to be your own person as an artist. 
surely. Um, but to move in the sort of direction that their influence on you has. Um, just try and soften out those edges. Got some clumpy paint there. there you go. Yeah, and um, to, to take what you can from them, their style, their approach, and integrate that into your own work and create your own unique view of it. I think that's the key, isn't it? That's what finding your own voice, is. and look, finding your own voice comes about when you paint hundreds and hundreds of paintings, and which I've done, and uh, still finding it, you know? It's still a work in process. I don't think you ever get to a point where you go, well, that's it. I mean, look at Picasso. He had so many different periods of his painting career, and not just painting, sculpting, and ceramics, and God knows what else. He even produced a play as well, I think with the guys, um, some poets who were in, involved in the surrealism movement. So I don't know that you ever truly find your place <laughs> and just stop there. But I do think it's important to keep evolving new ideas and new thinking. Just trying to shape up that tree by cutting into it a little bit. Um, let me, because what I really want this little sketch to be about is a bit of a sunset effect. So I need some more paint. And uh, hey, if you're watching this video, maybe you're watching it live, maybe you're not. Unfortunately, my connection is not that great right now for live streaming. I thought I'd give it a try, but hey, this video may not actually turn out at all because of that fact. But um, end of June, we are getting an upgraded internet connection here. Um, what they call in Australia the NBN, National Broadband Network, is going to apparently <laughs> going to be here at the end of June. And if that happens, look out YouTube, look out Facebook, I'm going to become a live stream um, maniac because I think it's such a great opportunity for people all around the world to get into the studio of an artist that never before in history, right? There's never been a time in history where you could come into my studio from anywhere in the world or any artist and, um, and just get a bird's eye view of an artist sharing their thoughts and showing you what their painting process is. I don't think that's ever happened ever. <laughs> well, it hasn't. You know, there's, the internet is, and, the, and the increase in the uh, technology with live stream so on has opened up opportunity, which is going to revolutionise the art world like nothing we've ever seen. And some artists are going to run from that and they're going to be terrified by it. And then there's going to be some artists who are going to go, well, you know what? This is my opportunity. This is my chance, you know, to become a an artist of, of uh, who has their own audience and attracts an audience to them. Because previously to attract an audience, you could really only do that through the gallery system, really. I mean, there was other ways, of course, but um, the gallery system was the, the way, it was the gateway, you know? And um, the owners of galleries, if you weren't considered to be what they were looking for, then they were the gatekeepers. But not now, now. Any artist can do what I'm doing right now. As long as you've got a good internet connection and you're happy to chat with potential collectors of your work, then you can build a global audience for your art. And if you're an artist right now, and you're watching this, man, you've got to just say, you know what, this is the chance. This is the one opportunity that artists have been waiting for to be self-representing. And there's never been a time like it in history for artists. You, yeah, I can't sleep at night thinking about it, right? Now, maybe you don't want to sell your art, you know, or you just want to be a hobby artist, and that's fine. Um, but if you're one of those people like me who goes, you know what, I love painting so much, the thought of having a day job, it just doesn't work for me, <laughs> right? Um, there's just no way. Um, if that's you, if that resonates with you, then embrace this technology opportunity. And maybe, you know, maybe you're like me right at the moment. I'm frustrated because I can see the opportunity to live stream and connect with people all around the world. I can see it. 
on Facebook and YouTube, but my internet connection is just not quite there yet. So this video is probably going to break up and it's giving me a message saying it's a poor connection, right? Thought I'd do it anyway. Um, but if that's you, if you're stuck in that place that I am, hang in there, right? Because in a year or two or however long, you will have the ability, you know, the internet connections will improve all around the world. And then you'll be able to reach out to the 2.5 billion people who are currently online right now. You know, that might be 3.5 billion in a couple of years time, who knows, right? But artists have never had a chance like they've got right now to be self-representing. And if you're, if you're serious about your art and you, you can't sleep at night thinking because you're always lying awake thinking about what you're gonna paint next or sculpt next or how can you get into new markets and sell more of your work. If you're serious about your, your art in that way, then jump on board this opportunity, opportunity of a lifetime. It won't ever come again and it may not last, right? Um, I say it may not last because the moment live streaming is free. And it doesn't get any cheaper than free to build an audience for your work. But that won't last, right? <laughs> These big companies like Facebook and YouTube and so on, they do a brilliant job, but they're no buddies. They're, no, they're, they're their commercial business ventures, right? So free live streaming today. Get everyone used to using it and they'll be charging for it in the future. Now, if you're smart and you build an audience ahead of time, like right now, have a sense of urgency about it, then you can do extremely well. And that's what I'm doing. And uh, the day I get my <laughs> internet connection upgraded, look out world, you know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna be all over live streaming. Um, and for now, we'll just have to suffer with poor connection quality, and I do apologize. Mixing up some dark green, Viridian, ultramarine blue, bit of yellow, I haven't got any yellow ochre left, but a bit of cad, and I'm just going to just, just play that green into this dark. Paint's quite wet in there, I use quite a bit of thinner, because I wanted to get it soft. Yeah, I tell you, it, as an artist, it's never been better. Never been a better time. You just gotta, Open your eyes to the possibility. That's the thing. Like too many artists are like stuck in the woe is me. I used to have a gallery and I used to do well. Bitching and moaning about how things used to be better in the old days, back in the 80s. I used to sell lots of, you know, a lot of Australian landscape artists did really well in the 80s, right? Not doing so well now because galleries are closing and, you know, Australian landscape painting doesn't sell as well these days. Well, you know, time to change. <laughs> Nothing stays the same. Which is part of the reason why like, I started out being inspired by Australian landscape artists and what's known as the Heidelberg School of Australian Impressionism. It's still my favourite type of art, you know? Doesn't sell so well in this day and age with modern houses and um, people want larger, colourful, more abstracty sort of paintings these days. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to move the times, you know? Now you should always paint what you love, I'll always paint Australian landscapes in, in that style or my version of that style. However, if you want to be a working artist and earn an income from it, maybe it's time to change. You know? Maybe. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is. That's for you to decide. But the world's changing. That's the point. Right? The world is changing. And it's not going to stand still for you just because you did well some other time in the past. The past is the past, man. It's gone. <laughs> Those who did well in the past, if you just keep talking about how well you did in the past, then you won't do much better in the future. I got my colours a bit muddy there, didn't I? Mm. Talking too much. Think not, not in the zone enough because I'm talking just a little bit too much. But anyway, I do like sharing my thoughts and approach. That's why I started more art schools, because I, uh, I guess I'm a natural, natural born teacher. I've got too much thinner really in here. I really should take a break for an hour, let this dry out, but I won't because I'm just doing a little sketch.
really just playing around with the composition and style more than anything. And if I hit upon something that I like, then I'll, you know, I'll expand it up into a bigger painting that maybe I'll pop it up on, uh, or I'll do a bigger painting, you know, because I'm doing a bit of a collection of this style at the moment, trying to get a body of work together over the next six months with this style. But in the interim, like little paintings like this, I'll pop them up on eBay and put them up on auction and whatever they sell for, they sell for, you know, because I figure that if they sell for something, then I'm partly on the right track. You know what I mean? Even if I only get a dollar for them on auction, if somebody's willing to put their hand up and bid a dollar, then I must be onto something with the, with the style or the approach. So how do I get that dollar to go to $10, $20, $30, and who knows, maybe even $100 one day? That's, so that's the way I look at it, you know? Like a lot of artists go, oh, I've never put my work up for a dollar auction because they're afraid of losing or what they think is losing. But I don't think of it that way. I think of it as well, <laughs> I don't want to be like the artists that I know that have got 500 paintings in their garage, you know what I mean? <laughs> never gonna sell a painting because they're afraid to put themselves out there. Um, they think their work is, their paintings are worth more than maybe what the market thinks. Right? And ultimately the market decides. You can put whatever price you want on your, <laughs> on your artwork, but if you're not meeting what the market wants to pay for your artwork, then guess what you're gonna have a garage full of? Paintings, right? Because as much as art is special and all those type of things, in the real world, the average person who's gonna buy a piece of art, they've got X amount of dollars to spend on everything else, and you're competing with everything else. Um, so what makes you so special that they're gonna pay an inflated price that you think it should be worth? Now, if you're happy to keep hold of all your paintings, then that's fine. Put whatever price you want on it. You know, if it makes you feel good, put $15,000 on your paintings, even if they just started. But that, that's not anything to do with what the market value is, what the market perceives your paintings worth. Like two different things. So you've got to ask yourself, at what price would I be prepared to let go of this painting? And at what price do I want to keep owning it? <laughs> and uh, I think a lot of artists, they have a, slightly inflated view, or they have a view of their, the worth of their paintings that is out of alignment with, with um, what the market views their paintings to be worth. That's just personal opinion, of course, and I could be completely wrong. Um, but I think it's because they hear of artists' work selling for high amounts, and they think, oh, I don't want to undervalue my work. So they put prices on their work that means that they never sell any work, and then they complain that nothing sells. Well, maybe it's just because, you know, art is part of a commercial market. People have got choices of what to do with their money. And uh, you get to decide, do you want to hold on to the piece or do you want to sell it? And if you don't meet the market's expectation of value is what I'm saying, then you're going to be holding on to your work. Now, not everyone's in it to be, to make their career. I love painting so much that you know, I, I decided that I just want to spend all my waking hours making art and teaching other, you know, teaching other people how to also make art, which is why I started the art school. So therefore, to be able to make that a possibility, unlike you, you know, and everyone else that you know, have to uh, pay the bills. put food on the table, and most importantly, buy art supplies. Okay, I think I'm fiddling a little bit with this one. Prefer to keep it fresh and spontaneous as much as possible. So I'll just Especially around this border here. 
So I think one of the things I was um, saying on another demo I did was um, about the importance of experimenting with new ideas, new approaches, and so on. So using a palette knife for me is something I hadn't really done a lot of. And uh, I'm just learning how to use it. And so little demos like this um, is a great way to try out new things. And somebody on eBay is going to love this and want to own it. And uh, nothing wrong with getting paid to try new things and practice your craft. Get a little bit of money back for it and uh, reinvest that into more art supplies, yeah? That's what I've been teaching my students anyway. All right, I think I'm gonna call this one pretty well finished. Keeping it as abstract as I can while it's, you know, trying to make it still make sense. Because, you know, one of the things I'm really leaning towards, the, the more I paint, I think I said this earlier, but the more I paint, the more I'm sort of leaning towards less definitive detail in my landscapes. And really, instead of trying to paint what I see, paint the feeling of it, trying to create a mood, an atmosphere. That's what I'm sort of more focused on. So, not sure what we'll call this one, but... I will sign it and I'll pop it up on eBay. Thanks for watching and um, hopefully the internet connection wasn't too bad and you're able to make some sense out of this video. But hey, keep in mind that in June, end of June, um, they promised us that we'll have an increase or a better internet connection, the MBN. And uh, when they do, baby, I shall be uh, letting you into my studio a whole lot more. Anyway, have fun, happy painting. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll just show you the, it's a little bit hard to get the right angle, something like that. Anyway, a little abstract sort of moody dusk landscape scene, just for a bit of fun. Hope you've enjoyed it. Happy painting, cheers.